here with Terry from the newly formed SAA, and of course Ria from, here we go, Green Bank. Woohoo! Um, so I'm just curious, why are you sitting next to Terry? I'm sitting next to Terry because he's from SAA and I'm a director and a board member of SAA. And we wanted to talk to you today about the new accreditation body. Okay. So Terry, um, what is the purpose of SAA? So SAA is here with a sole focus purpose of providing accreditation services to Australia in the solar PV industry under the ESO scheme, um, backed by the Clean Energy Regulator. Um, but we also provide battery accreditation and focus on all things in that emerging solar industry, although batteries are well established by now anyway. So yeah, all things solar accreditation, um, training and compliance related. So if someone was previously accredited or still accredited with the Clean Energy Council, uh, what should they do? So there's, we're, we've now entered as of last Thursday, um, February the 29th, a three month transition window. So every existing accredited installer um, with the CEC can go to saaustralia.com.au, um, follow the steps, very simple process, and basically apply for accreditation under SAA. SAA recognises everything that was in place already with the CEC, so it's super simple. The sign-up is really just a revalidation of identity because SAA has all of the existing database of information, all of the existing CPD points, um, all of the accreditation types, the evidence, everything's already there. Uh, what we want is someone to come on, give consent to sign up basically, validate their identity, and then it's a, you know, a smooth, process of you're on the books of SAA and the existing expiry date of the existing accreditation is still in play. So that means if an installer is accredited up till let's say August this year, that is still in effect. It's still honoured and then... It's not going back to day one? No, no, no. So the existing renewal date and expiry date, um, sorry, is in place and then the renewal date happens um, as, as was the previous so, arrangement. CPD? CPD is the same, points carry over. Um, the change with SAA is that it's a three-year accreditation period. So the fees are actually exactly the same per year. However, SAA does a three-year renewal period, yeah. period. So essentially that means that, you know, there's a bigger upfront fee, but it lasts, you only have to do the process once for three years. Yeah. And we found that more streamlined as well. So then they could commit for the three years and then they've done and dusted. They still have to do their points each year but it's been a fantastic rollout so far hasn't it yeah and that's a good point there's still a the same there's an annual commitment for cpd that is a requirement still annually within that three-year period but the admin requirement is not there in terms of needing to keep on top of that and reapply and you know, resubmit every year so we've had a lot of good feedback around that and we listen to industry in advance on putting that together as a change so yeah, it, it is a change. There's no increase in fees either, so that's great. It's a really good outcome, I think. Because, you know, changing bodies would always mm. incur more fees or an increase in, yeah. in fees. So Just, I think that's a great achievement. So in terms of CPD points, if you sort of overshoot one year and you get 110 CPD points, uh, do you go back to zero again for year two and have to get another 100 or just another 90? That's a really good question. Um, and I'm going to have to defer people to the team at SAA to um, answer that because as with every new startup business, we're finding these niche scenarios that pop up and questions that get asked. And then we have to go back and either refer to what we'd already thought of or maybe make a decision about it. So I'm going to say, just go to the website, call the hotline number and ask the team and a decision around that will be there, but I don't want to give false information oh, on, okay. the, on the spot. I, I'll tell you, it happens. You go to a conference, you get a whole bunch of CBD points, you suddenly discover you've got like 140. Yeah. Uh, so next question is, uh, you know, can I get rid of my demerit points just by moving to SAA? No, they're, they're all on the, um, the profile of a person and all of that information is carried over and continued. Yeah. Right. But what about um, compliance issues? Uh, is, if you've got some uh, uh, compliance issues, does the SAA get involved in that? Yeah, absolutely. Its sole purpose is around um, accreditation, training yeah. and compliance. So all of the, the recourse that happens around compliance is the job of the SAA team to navigate that process. I will say though that there's a real effort um, around the ethics of that from the beginning in being able to have fair 
contesting and fair recourse and basically somebody to you know reasonably talk to around that because I know that was a pain point before for industry um, so we're really taking great efforts to make that a really fair process and have clear outcomes clear actions uh, on each case. With the change line as well, I believe there's a, there's a phone number that you can ring, there's the website and navigate through that whole help desk. Well. Right. Okay. So with the change from the CC uh, to SAA, the role of the CER, has that changed in any way? So the regulator have been a great collaborator in all of this process and we really have worked as a collective team for you know standing up this new scheme and bettering the industry. The regulator has its own enforcement um, responsibilities and powers to it and they play a big part hand in hand with SAA in coming to you know fair outcomes that are clear and having clear actions um, after that on as I said on an, each individual case. Yeah now I heard one of the speakers at the installment forum uh, this afternoon actually saying uh, one of the changes would be that the SAA aren't doing uh, technical support uh, so what would be the, uh, what would installers do if they need some technical support? Yeah, that's right. And it's worth a note to say that SAA was started as a joint venture, really strong collaboration from two very strong industry organisations in Master Electricians Australia and the Smart Energy Council. So from the beginning, it was a decision that SAA should not muddy the waters in offer things that outside of accreditation and compliance that really should sit within membership organisations and other organisations across industry. So that tech support function, for example, uh, an electrical contractor, a business owner could go to master electricians and get that service, or they could go to other companies out there in the market. And SA is there to really zoom in and focus on the accreditation side of things so that we do that and do that really well and then also not try and not create a conflict of interest when really creating things that are membership benefit services. So, you know, it's, it's difficult. Yeah, I think. Yeah. yeah. Now, in terms of uh, certificate traders, uh, is there anything changed for you? No, it's been a complete smooth transition. Um, there's been a couple of numbers come through and then there's already a transition period. How many people registered? Uh, in the first couple of days? It, it's been really amazing and actually super exciting to keep watching the numbers clock up. But we've had 2,300 plus as of uh, a couple of hours ago when I last checked, which we're really keen to be constantly looking at the, the ticker yeah. there. So yeah, that's more than a quarter, more than 25% of all of the accredited installers that have already applied and, and transitioned. Fantastic. They just use their CEC number and their SAA number and then they still can create STCs and still get paid for time. Right, so if, if they haven't got their uh, S number from SAA, they can still use the CC number? Yeah, if they're not registered yeah. with SAA yet and they haven't gone through that transition period, period, they can continue to use their CC number? Up until the 29th of May. Okay, so for instance, I, I did the transition. It was seamless, it's true, it was a five minute job. Uh, you know, I was a bit naughty with the picture I uploaded with me with my gold chain, but anyway. Uh, and uh, I couldn't recognise you without it. That's right. But uh, I haven't got my S number yet, so I'd still use my CEC accreditation number up until the 29th of May. That's right. As soon as you get issued your new S accreditation number, that becomes now in effect and... Replaces the CEC. That's right. Yeah. Now, that will happen over a period of time. So is it going to be a little issue for uh, certificate traders to know whether someone's been issued with an S number or not? Okay, remain calm. You will get your number. It will only take a couple of days. Oh, OK. Yeah. Yeah. Ticket. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Oh, cool. Well, it all seems kind of easy. Yes. <laughs> That's why we like it. Yeah. Right? It's okay. Smooth. Well, a, a lot of work in the process design to make this, you know, a smooth transition. And yes. Then Beyond that, we're going forward into creating a great and enhanced and refined user experience, user journey. So yeah, a lot of effort and hats off to all the team that's been yeah. involved in that, in standing something up in a super short time frame that is simple, does work, and you know, is a great starting point for us all in the industry. We appreciate all the installers' patience and all the installers' support as well. Um, it's great to be able to transition and transition smoothly. Cool. Well, thanks, Terry. Thanks, Ria. It's been good learning about the changes with SAA. Cool. Thanks, Ben. See ya.